That's right, folks. Uh, we are here. This is the not-so-impromptu MRA live discussion on Live 365. We're probably going to hold these things somewhat regularly. Uh, anytime we don't have a uh, Tuesday or Thursday night show scheduled for you with either the O'Hara News and Editorial or Honey Badger Radio, we're going to be bringing you this show. and. This is our first installment. Uh, we want to make sure we provide plenty of food for all the show-hungry people out there. And that's what this show is all about. So, tonight we've got a panel of people, uh, and we're going to go ahead and bring each one on in turn. Say hello to Valsen, Lucian. Hello, everyone. All right, we've got Hannah. Hello. Crystal? Hi! Rachel? Hello! And Al, who everybody here would know as the man on the street. Why the hell am I last? <laughs> because that's the order that you showed up in my window. <laughs> Damn! Yeah. Well, you know. Slow but steady, right? There you go. All right, folks. Well, uh, seeing as how we are actually running a panel, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and dangle a piece of meat out for these dogs and let them fight over it. And the very first subject for the night is Melody Hensley's super scary PTSD and how she damsels to shut down discussion with whomever disagrees with her. So there we go, folks. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take it away. I'm going to push uh, Lucian out in front, and uh, he can get us started. 
Yeah, well, I, I just heard about the story today, or actually yesterday on my case, since it's 4 a.m. in here, in the oppression center in Europe. Um, <clears throat> well, basically, the only thing that I have to say is... The fact that I'm old enough to uh, to have to have been learning English when back in the days when PTSD was known as shell shock. Uh, so, um, given the old name shell shock, I just cannot believe Melody Hensley to actually suffering from PTSD. And now I'm not a psychologist, uh, and I've asked two psychologists, and one of them said that it could be possible to get PTSD from social media. The other one says that it's not possible at all. So, I don't know if it is possible, uh, but in the case of Melody Hensley, I actually do believe that she does, she has no PTSD. However, given her behavior, I would argue that she has some personality issues. And even if she has PTSD as well, I don't believe she has, but even if she has, uh, I think that's her last problem. That would be pretty much what I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she she seems to have a lot lot more on her plate uh, <laughs> than just PTSD. Uh, go ahead, Rachel. I just want to say they're always talking about male privilege and how privileged you have to be when this is the worst possible thing that's ever happened in your life. This is what triggers a mental breakdown. Social media. I just <laughs> just just wrap your mind around that for a second. I just. That's just what I had to say. Uh, <laughs> Hannah? Well, the thing I have to wonder uh, is if she's got post-traumatic stress disorder from being on Twitter, why is she still on Twitter? And it, the little bit that I've read from this, um, she's continued to use Twitter, and she's continuing to talk back to people on Twitter, including calling a, a rape victim insensitive for for uh, saying that post-traumatic stress disorder from um, using social media cannot possibly be the same thing as post-traumatic stress disorder from being physically attacked. So I, I kind of have to wonder if it's if it's actually you know that serious. If she's actually that traumatized, why does she keep coming back? Because she's a very strong woman. <laughs> go, go ahead, Crystal. <laughs> uh, yeah, I even saw ha that she posted that she was going to get in contact with the commanding officer of a soldier who dared question her PTSD disorder. Uh, I don't know if she actually followed through with that, but she did say that that uh, here is a soldier who has actually put his life on the line uh, for her own safety, and she has the nerve to say that she wants to threaten his job for him questioning the validity of her so-called PTSD disorder. I mean, PTSD. Uh, look, it, it, here's here's my opinion on on this woman. Yeah. Here we have an individual who is the director of the DC branch of the Center for Inquiry. And she's been a mover and shaker in the secularist community. Uh, she puts together the, uh, Women in Secularism Conference. Back in, uh, I want to say, uh, uh, late, mid to late 2013, she came out with uh, s several articles talking about how hurt she was by the various things that were happening online, how her, uh, support systems kept, uh, you know, trying to help her out, but how she started to become afraid of leaving the house and going to strange places. Now this, on top of everything else, up to and including essentially yeah, trying to fuck veterans in the ass uh, for actually expressing an opinion. And what I've got to say about this is, if this is the woman responsible for bringing women into secularism, then secularism is fucked. 
it's fucked anyways. And, and I didn't say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? Hey, I'm going to jump in here. Um, I'm a vet. I'm a war vet. And, uh, bitch, I'll slap you silly if you ever use that term again. Okay, next. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rachel, go ahead. <laughs> uh, and that's the thing. We have a lot of feminists coming into the secular community, and they're just completely poisoning the fucking well. It's really just... It's crazy. They're silencing uh, free speech everywhere they go, including these places where we've always found, you know, you know, you could say what you want to. You, you could actually have these meaningful discussions and debate and now they're getting shut down because of their delicate sensibilities, and it's complete bullshit. And that's the, that's the kind of feminist that she is. And I don't want that... I don't want that in atheism. Uh, I, I really want strong women who can actually be skeptical, who can actually ask questions in the movement, you know? I just... I, it's too much. Lucian? <laughs> well, <clears throat> Rachel, you have to understand that she's a special snowflake. <laughs> <laughs> she yeah. is. She is a special snowflake. And you said there that they poison the well. Well, yes. Th Thunderfoot has been explaining for quite some time that feminism poisons everything. And uh, that means literally everything. We'll probably yes. see to, to uh, later in this show how they literally poison everything. And I just remembered uh, <clears throat> my grandfather, who died, unfortunately, uh, 10 years ago, he fought in World War II. Uh, that's where I, I've learned Russian, for instance, because he spoke, he, because he spoke Russian and German, of course. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> he fought in World War II uh, from 1939 until 1945. Uh, unfortunately, if, if he were alive, I would just take this to him. And I, I can just... I can have, I can only imagine him saying, "What the fuck is this bullshit?" And that's what I mean. You you just can't talk. It's just like the the band bossy thing. It's so utterly inept that you just can't talk about it without with, without without having your your blood boiling. Go ahead, Al. Um, no, seriously. Uh, uh, with my my goofiness, uh, serious question for the panel and and for those out there. And I, I see someone wrote exactly what I was thinking about uh, just a few moments ago. But um, question, uh, do you think maybe that because PTSD is more, um, uh, it, it's more of a male problem, let's say, or a veteran's problem, which is, you know, traditionally mostly male, uh, maybe that's why she's she's got her, you know, her panties in a twist about it? Because she wants to, you know, somehow, you know, take that word back like they took pussy and, and took, uh, uh, slut and all those other words, you know, somehow they want to take this, take this, this word and, and use it as their own because it's an evil male thing. I mean, seriously. Well, I mean, that's, that's kind of how I feel about it. You, you're, you're, you're bringing up an interesting point. And, and in this case, I, I would ask Melody, why does she feel as if she has to, act like a man in order to prove herself like a strong, independent woman. Uh, and, you know, the whole victimization scheme where she's going to try to uh, adopt a, a this type of issue and twist it around on the very people who, who are out to protect her freedoms is just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, just to me, it just seems like, you know, She's, she's, she's found something that is traditionally male. Um, you know, and I'm not saying there aren't females out there that, 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 uh, don't have PTSD. I mean, there are a lot of different things, but to me, you know, uh, hashtag boogerface is not an excuse to be, you know, I have post traumatic stress disorder because somebody called me boogerface on Twitter. Are you kidding me? Grow the hell up, lady. <laughs> Go ahead, Hannah. You know? Well, I think that's it's because it is about victimhood that she's doing this. Um, and it's not saying that having post-traumatic post -traumatic stress disorder is a victim thing, because 
a, a huge amount of the time it has nothing to do with the individual being a victim, but the individual going through something that was just so horrible or so traumatic that that um, you know that it's caused this level of response. But I'm sure that from the feminist perspective, this is an area of being treated the way victims are treated. Uh, that that women are not dominating, and so this is why you have this this desire to to start applying it to everything that they consider upsetting, and this is just a an extreme manifestation of this that she's turned around and and actually decided that being disagreed with on the internet is so traumatic that she just can't handle it, and it and and she's equating that. With the experience of being in a war zone, how how dare how dare those fucking men get their body parts blown off and be a more of a victim than I? Yeah, go, yeah. go ahead, Al. <laughs> has, has, has anyone actually read any of the the supposed uh, you know threats and and scary boogaboo stuff that's you know, that's given her this? This, uh, this, uh, self-proclaimed diagnosis. I mean, you know, what, what kind of things? I mean, you know, has she gotten these, the, uh, you know, the, uh, uh elevator gate freaking, you know, want to go have coffee? I mean, what, what the, you what know, was said that she's so distraught and so, so scared of life in the world? You know, that bringing that I, up actually, uh, that somebody sent a couple of a voice for men staffers a tweet with a link to a, an execution an al qaeda execution in an argument and i don't think they developed post traumatic stress disorder from it and personally i've i've been told to go get raped and die in a fire and and you know i should lose my family all kinds of stuff like that and i don't have post traumatic stress so boy somebody must have some, some, said something really awful to her uh, for it to be I, bad there, enough to cause is, that. There is a backstory here, and for anybody who's interested, uh, some guy, uh, for the last couple of years, has been going through Melody's tweets and essentially posting them on Storyfy. And whenever she says something really stupid, which seems to be a regular thing with her, uh, I guess this guy has been taking all those tweets and putting them on Storyfy, and this is what she considers online harassment. Now, this guy isn't going so far as to send her threats or anything like that, but he does have some snarky titles for each one of these Storyfys that he's been doing on her. Um, things like, uh, can you believe this, you know, dumb bitch thinks this, you know, or something like that. Um, but yeah, uh, she says it's cyber stalking and things of that nature. And she's, hey, you know, if you're going to put your dick out in the wind, people are going to look. Um, that's just the way it is. But that's sexist. Uh, yeah, it would seem so. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> go, go ahead, Crystal. Uh, yeah, I, I find it completely just grotesque that she even has the nerve to compare, uh, wah, wah, someone disagreed with her on the internet, to compare that with, with, with soldiers who have, who have actually been at war. I mean, I don't understand what rock she's been living under, or, you know, how padded her cell has been that when she actually entered the world, that, oh my god, you know, she freaked out out of the first word that someone disagreed with her that it could cause her such a drastic meltdown i mean i don't even understand how she has a job if that's the case or you know why she even owns any technology if that's the case because anybody can contact her at any moment and just send her on a you know a tailspin i i just i don't i don't understand this well like i said folks um and, and we'll we'll wrap up the subject with this if this is the individual who you're going to put in charge of recruiting women to secularism. Secularism is fucked. Or, at the very least, the Center for Inquiries um, <laughs> going to be fucked in the long run. Hey, whoa, what is this? This is the uh, bonus round, folks. We're going to go ahead and move straight to the fucking bonus round. 
<laughs> Nobody would have expected this. The University of Wisconsin in Madison has established oh, a post-doctorate specialization in feminist biology. I'm going to say that one <laughs> more time. One more time. Uh, this is not a joke. This is the real deal. First in the nation, University of Wisconsin-Madison establishes a post-doctorate specialization in feminist biology. <laughs> oh, and according to Janet Hyde, who happens to be the director of Campus Center for Research on Gender and Women. A female fascist. Uh, yes. Uh, she says, the program is the first in the nation and probably the world, folks. Um, I hope it's the that, last. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll read my mind. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go on here. Uh, what's, uh, what's ahead. her, what's her reasoning? I'm, I'm gonna interrupt the ladies because, you know, they could possibly be, you know, secret feminists, so. <laughs> What, what the hell's the reasoning behind this? What, what is, uh, you know, I mean, what, what is uh, biology is biology, isn't no, it? Uh, I, I didn't I, know it really had a specific. Why, why don't why don't why don't we let um, why don't we let our resident expert in these types of things go ahead and say something? Um, and for that, we're going to turn to Lucian uh, because <laughs> he, he does he does have the skinny on some other similar types of programs. Go ahead, in, Lucian. Yeah, indeed. Uh, probably I'm the least, the, the, the person that is least surprised by this type of bullshit from, uh, from everyone around here. Because, and James is, is more than aware about this. We've talked on the Voice of Europe about these things. It's not the first, it, it is the first time when I hear the, the catchphrase feminist biology. But it's not the first time when I hear the a feminist used as an adjective to describe uh, so-called uh, fields of research. That's why, for instance, we've had the uh, feminist geography. We've talked about that on the Voice of Europe quite a while ago. Uh, feminist geography is, uh, for instance, uh, um, uh, the geography studied outside the Cartesian system, which allegedly uh, symbolizes male dominance over everything. I know it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't suppose it. It's not supposed to have any sense. It's feminist geography. Um, and uh, there is also feminist mathematics. There is also anti-racist mathematics. Um, there are. It is not a new idea. Uh, unfortunately, what what makes this thing particularly special, unlike other uh, similar similarly stupid ideas that have emerged throughout the Western world lately, is that this time she actually gets to establish a postdoctorate study inside the university. In the past, the the most outrageous thing that happened before with the applying primitivist, <coughs> sorry, postmodernist thought to these kinds of things was when we had the, in the United Kingdom in late 70s or early 80s uh, something called uh, anti-racist mathematics, which was eventually dealt out with. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> other than that, the, the only unique thing in this is that she actually got approved to have a postdoctoral um, study on this issue. Uh, which makes you wonder, uh, male studies was not, uh, was not allowed in, uh, in Australia in something that is more, in something that is based on facts and about something that is based on how the world really works. And this one, which is basically, when you say feminist biology, it is by all means an ideological study, uh, over biology, that's something that is uh, now admissible as a postdoctoral study in a real university. What the fuck, Moika? Yeah, what the fuck indeed, Hannah? Maybe it's to study all of those ten-horned, uh, one-armed flying, purple people eating feminists. <laughs> it's this is the thing that that really stumps me about this, honestly. I know, um, as far as academia is concerned, they've been touting the the authority of academia in debate 
over and over again. You should believe us because we're professors. You should believe us because we cite peer-reviewed studies, peer-reviewed, of course, by other professors. And then they come out with something like this and and have no um, no expectation that this is going to impact on the credibility of feminist academia. Um, I, I don't understand how they cannot realize that they're undercutting themselves when they when they come up with stuff like this. Well, here's here's what we've got here. The first postdoctoral fellow for this, I guess, is Carolyn Van Sickle, now completing her PhD in biological anthropology at the University of Michigan. When her two-year fellowship begins in September, she plans to continue her research on female human ancestors by investigating changes in pelvis shape and therefore childbirth anatomy during the course of human evolution. Her focus will be South African Australopithecine species dating from 1.5 million to 3 million years ago. Van Circle will also teach gender and biology and develop a new course in the area. It sounds to me like a uh, self-perpetuating cycle. She's going to go on after this and develop a whole new course, and then her next batch of students are going to start developing courses of their own, and pretty soon it's going to be widely accepted with all these different courses that feminist biology is for reals. It's for reals, everybody. Just Sounds like, quite profitable. Just like Man Bear Pig. Fucking scary. And, <laughs> I'm sure she'll be publishing textbooks on this and uh, and so on serial. as well. And and then and then they're going to move from biology because some feminists are going to say, "Well, they've got it for biology." How come we don't have it for paleontology or or, or archaeology? I want feminist archaeology. Oh, God. Dear God, help We can't us. have a feminist rhinoceros or something, can we? Well, feminist yeah. engineering. When they come out, when they come out with feminist archaeology, we're going to see a whole bunch of Tomb Raider types running all around. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. I'm excited now. It's Not. okay. They'll, they'll succumb to the elements and die. It's okay. <laughs> Are they all going to look like Angelina Jolie? No, they're all going to look like Andrea Dworkin and inside well, of a sucks. inside of a tight leather suit. Oh. Well, frankly, the pole looks pretty dead. bad anyway. So what? Well, the you have the nightmares difference? now. <laughs> You've given me post traumatic stress disorder, James. I don't think I can handle this. It's going to look like it's going to look like a pig waddling along inside of its own intestine. Oh my god! And it'll be flying. No, no, no. Andrea Dworkin's worse. Yes, she in, is. In, in any case. In any case. I have a man crush we, on Andrea we are, Dworkin. We are, looking, <laughs> <laughs> we are looking at the bastardization. The bastardization of hard sciences. Okay? Yep. I have no <laughs> doubt in my mind that the final step in all of this is to come out with feminist physics. Oh my god. Prove, prove that gravity is a patriarchal construct. <laughs> and oh we'll my all god. fly to the fucking moon. Because we become self empowered women. <laughs> no, no, no. They're all going to fly off to the dark side of Uranus where they came from. <laughs> 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 oh my God. You do realize, James, if this happens now, I'm coming to kill you. Well, I, I'm, I'm telling Don't you. Give them ideas, James. No, no, wait, wait. See, we we are the vanguard, folks. And, and this is this is sort of something else I think is important to put out here. We are the vanguard. Those listening to this show, those participating in this show, we are the people that stand between asshats like this that we're talking about and the rest of the world. So, if it comes to pass, it's because we didn't do our fucking jobs. Go ahead, Lucian. 
Yeah, I just remembered that uh, when you mentioned that this is basically the bastardization of science, I remember that this is not uh, the first time when it happened in an official capacity. Uh, if you remember, I wrote quite some time ago a review about the about the book uh, written by Judge Serrano in Spain, uh, and he mentioned how uh, uh, feminists got control over the United Nations and how the only way to get uh, uh, money for feminists remained to uh, basically create a project, a, a, write an application to uh, have a project about uh, uh, gender and fish farming in Congo. And they could get money for, uh, for that project. I mean, you could basically put gender and anything and you could get easy a lot of money from the World Bank and from the United Nations. And this is how they do it in here as well. Gender and biology. And uh, probably, as James said, it will probably next be gender in physics, gender in anthropology, gender and whatever. Uh, <clears throat> it's not the first time, and I'm extremely skeptical that it will be the last time, unfortunately. I don't want to sound uh, apocalyptic, but it's not going to be the last time. Well, if, 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 if it's going to go, we might as well go drunk. Uh, so, Al, I say you and I go in halvesies, uh, on a brewery, gender and beer. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. I'll drink no, to seriously, that. Seriously, if, 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 if they, if they want this, this, you know, the biology aspect and, and sure, I mean, you know, it seems logical to just go to the next step, you know, let's have, uh, you know, feminist pie and. Oh, pie. Ooh. Mm. Oh, um, seriously, it's stupid. The, the, I, 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 I have to be average, like average Joe. It just sounds retarded. It's just so ridiculous. I mean, yeah, what are we going to have? Why don't we just have a, a, a special, special world where all the sciences are F? Sciences, feminist sciences. And, and you know what? They can go on the other side of the moon. And they could all die for all I care. And the rest of us normal people will actually continue life as we know it. Because we understand that science has nothing to do with an ideology like feminism. I mean, well, I, seriously? You, you know, I've, I've often, I've often thought about just, just supplying a, a portion of land, uh, to some of these individuals to develop however they wish. And then sit back and watch. Watch what happens. Sure, why not? Well, you know, let's see. Um, let's see how quickly it takes them before all of a sudden they're all living the Radfem Hub dream. What the hell are they going to do when it's time of, to empty of, the trash of grass, or uh, clean living, the toilet or something like that? What are they uh, going to do? No, 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 no. You see, on Radfem Hub, their dream was essentially this serene lakeside location where they had these beautiful huts and this wonderful scenery and they went around and they planted everything while men played their ukuleles in the cave off in the distance uh, away from the women folk and the girls that lived in the village and they would simply free bleed all the fuck over the place <laughs> okay that sounds really nice sounds really red <laughs> so then we're talking about Saturn it's instead of the moon. <laughs> it's it's not a not a good thing. Not a good thing. I've got the feeling that that once you begin uh looking at these feminist things and you attempt to do something with them such as engineering then you're fucked. But how can you spin you an ideology you on a science? I, I don't get it. No, they, they can put an ideology on Mental a gymnastics. science all day long. The, the, the problem, the, the bottleneck, isn't the science. The bottleneck is, in fact, the practical application. And I would like to see some of these feminist biological theories actually being put into practical application. I'm not talking about a study of some historical perspective a a anybody anybody with a s with any kind of brain at all can come up with one day there were dragons flying in the air and then they all died 
yeah, there's your history for you. I'm talking about hard science actually being turned into a, a, a real-world application. That's where their shit is going to fall apart. That's when they turn back to their grass huts. That's when they scream and cry for the men to come along and go, Oh, save me! Or tell us, or tell us that we're not manning up. We've seen we're this happen. to lunch. <laughs> feminists, feminists have done this time and time again. Every single time they go out, try to do something, try to make it real world, it doesn't come to pass because they fucking suck at being able to take their stupid ideas and turn them into stupid actions. They, they don't even have, they don't even have the competence to actually be able to do anything that, that actually results in a real world gain. All of a sudden they run back and go, well, the men didn't support us. What, what, what? You had all those, you had all those white knights and manginas there just screaming and rooting and throwing in their donations and doing whatever they could and you guys still couldn't get it done. It's not the men's fault. It's your ideology. It is your ideology. Your perspective of the world is so fucked, you can't get it from paper into something real world. That's because their focus is on being victims instead of being constructive and being active. Anytime exactly. they are actually active, it's it's activity that revolves around being victims. It's never activity that revolves around building something useful. Very true. I mean, they're active really well when it comes to things like like slut walks. They're active really well when it comes to uh, getting what they want with uh, state-sanctioned rights, which we're about to get to in just a minute. But when it actually comes to building something meaningful, really meaningful, they suck. Well, actually, they've created a meaningful cult. I mean, so I guess we can give them credit for that. They have a that's, their, that's their they, little. That's a social but, engineering. I mean, <laughs> can we me, send them some Kool Aid? Show me, show me something. Just show me something that, as a group, they have done that has actually contributed to something other than the world's social malaise. Because I promise you, their, their meaningful impact is actually a lot. more people, then it's helped. Um, so no, until I see them come up with something physical, i.e. like, oh, I don't know, a sandwich. Um, <laughs> Go ahead, Al. Oh, I just uh, I just uh, had an epiphany. I, I think I got it all figured out for us here, guys. Seriously. I got it. They are victims of their own biology. There you go. Well, that's that's it. I, and, and that's the way they like classify themselves. Yeah. Well, there you go. We're done. I mean, that's what it's all about. That's what that's what feminist biology is to show them what poor widow victims they are. You know, I mean, the evil penis and patriarchy of the world is, you know, forcing them every 28 days to go bonkers. And, you know, hey, it, it, that's what it is. I mean, it's just it's just evil biology. It's, there it is. And it's, and it's the evil patriarchy that... Hold on, wait. Hold on, I got it. Wait. She's studying, she's studying uh, changes in pelvis shape and therefore childbirth anatomy. It's the evil penises that, yes. that, are, that are causing... Um, white pelvises and fat asses. Exactly. Now you got it. There we go. Okay, we've solved it all. Crystal? Question. Yeah, I, well, it's interesting because as they scream the whole patriarchy, patriarchy, what they're really saying, you know, as you're saying that they're victims of their biology, they're also saying, oh god, it's so loud here. Sorry, guys. Um, they're also saying that, uh, they're victims of survival is pretty much what they're saying. Men did everything, men did all this stuff, and all, you know, completely dismissing, uh, you know, any female interaction, but 
they're saying that because those were survival systems. We lived in survival systems, right? And so women are saying they are victims of survival. It's it's I, these feminists. I'll say not women, but feminists are saying that they are victims of survival because how dare patriarchy? I I, I don't know. It's just boggles the mind. You might want to look out that window and see whether or not the the uh... it's the thought police. They're coming for me. <laughs> it's gonna <laughs> see. Uh... Jesus, the feminist run! You see Hensley riding on top of a tank, surrounded by a slut team. <laughs> Did you say swat or slut? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh okay, God! Folks, I, I'm calling it. I'm I'm calling it from there. That is that is the end of the bonus round. That was beautiful. I, I hey, know- wait a minute. Somebody, hey, hey, James. Somebody yeah. in the in the chat room just called me L Bundy. What's up with that? Oh, I don't know. Guys, this... You don't even sound guys, like Al Bundy. I should respect our, our forum guy here. He, I mean, really? Yeah. You know, you just hurt my feelings again. Oh, God. I, I'm I'm very sad right now. Oh. I, I, I think I have PTSD. Oh. Or LMNOP or SRT964. Shit. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I, did. I, I think Val... <laughs> to close this one out. We're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to throw the last of the meat for the bonus round over to Valson. Go ahead. Yeah, well, <clears throat> actually I wanted to uh, uh, pass a question from the chat room to uh, to Al because he said that uh, uh, you know, these fanbots are basically the victims of their own biology, that they have to go to, uh, once in 28 uh, days to have to go bunkers. And Nefanor is asking a very pertinent question. I mean, you're actually saying that feminists are sane at least some time of the month? <laughs> it's a pertinent question. Well, you know, <laughs> this is you know this is this is where this is where their ideology wants to override biology. Um, so no, no, feminists are not sane. Uh, my my answer <laughs> answer to you is they are simply um, slightly less crazy. <laughs> 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 Okay, folks. Well, here we go. Um, we're going to move on to, to a, a segment that some of you might think, oh, again? We're going to do this again? Oh, man, I'm so tired of hearing about it. Well, f- too bad. I'm the guy who fucking picked the topics for the show. So, Adele Mercer and how she uses biased research, false stats, and false claims to promote a feminist agenda, and then uses borrowed credibility as a means of attempting to marginalize dissenting viewpoints. I just, I just have to say, uh, congratulations to the Honey Badgers for handling that uh, um, Queen's uh, anonymous. Thing that was put up online where they wanted to be pretenders. I'm surprised that 4chan hasn't put the hammer down on the people who put that out. Well, but you know, they've edited their low bars since then. Now they're in, there's an asterisk next to the first mention of the word anonymous. And uh, at the very bottom of all of the text in the low bar, it says, not that anonymous. Oh, not that anonymous. <laughs> oh. I guess that's supposed to be their asses. <laughs> not oh, that anonymous. Yeah. <laughs> I was oh, just God. kidding. Yeah. You silly, silly guys. I was just joking around. But somebody or somebody might have gotten to him. Possibly. Yeah. Although, they, they've got two videos and five subscribers. Anonymous might be laughing so hard collectively that, that that none of them are able to type right now. They're probably <laughs> no, I am. sitting in their dorms rooms right now going, <laughs> I got sand in my vagina! <laughs> <laughs> what 4chan calls butthurt. Yes. And the butthurt is immense. Let it flow through them. <sighs> the butthurt is strong the butthurt with this one. In this one. <laughs> it's, it's the gift that keeps on giving. It's wonderful. So... So back back to back to Adele Mercer as I as I dangle the tamale into the middle of the table. Let's see who wants to bite first. Anybody? 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 
Oh, I'll jump. I'm just curious how to, how this woman could could make the statements that she's made, having, uh, what two, three sons? Two? I, I don't remember. She she has a couple of boys, right? I mean, how how could she? Oh, how? <laughs> That's my question. How? Kind of makes you feel sorry for them, doesn't it? Yes, yeah. yes. Oh. It's like, wow, mom, I can feel the love here. She well, can't more see men as victims. Sorry. Say that again, Rachel. She can't see men as victims. That's the problem. It, it would totally throw a monkey wrench in her fucking agenda. Just... Yes. <laughs> that is exactly it. So, so the, the, the whole concept of, of maternal instinct and all that kind of goes out the window, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure there's probably, there's human parenting instincts that both sexes have, but I think you also have to consciously admit those into your, you know, your life. You have to actually be that person on purpose. You don't just accidentally love your kids. You, you, it's a mentality. In other words, you, you actually, you actually have to work at, at it like, like anybody else. Yes. Uh, um, yeah, sure. I I can understand that. These are these are individuals, however, and it seems to me that Adela Mercer likes to classify men as a group. And I'm just curious as to how brainwashed her her own immediate family has to be in order to continue to support her, or whether or not she's going to end up writing the same type of shit that Jermaine Greer. Uh, wrote not that long ago about how um, she felt as if everybody left her. Now, false stats, false claims to promote a feminist agenda. I mean, look, we we saw this plainly uh, when she stood up and she gave those famous words, I'm a feminist. I have no idea what you are talking about. Well, of course she doesn't. <laughs> yeah, of course she doesn't. Maybe she's just starting into uh, senile dementia. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's really it's really difficult for her to see any of this outside of her hug box, you know, outside of her echo chamber. When you live in that kind of community where they just share all of the same ideas, you never hear one that's different from your own, and you just kind of, you know, feed on to the confirmation bias train and just ride it. Just <laughs> and, well, you know, and, and I've, I've met some very well-meaning individuals before, uh, who are afraid to step out of that intellectual box and actually be challenged, uh, with different viewpoints. Uh, when I was a young man, I was very much like that. I had a certain set of ideas and I didn't really know why I had those ideas. I just, had them, and I knew other people who had them, and we had them together, and it was a great feeling to to have these ideas, because you were included into the rest of the group. And then one day, some asshole came up to me, and he said, your ideas are stupid. And the worst mistake I ever made was asking why. Because then the veil was stripped away from my eyes. Feminism teaches adherence to their ideology to never ask why. Whenever somebody says you're wrong, they automatically fall back into this... Um, La 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 la! I'm not listening. La 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 la! Type <laughs> state. That's exactly what they do. Adele Mercer, for as old as she is, and for as much knowledge as she may have in her particular field, I'm not questioning that. Uh, is still an ideological idiot. Because when it came to this, she could not countenance asking why. 
Anybody have an opinion on that? Well, that is a really good uh, point. She couldn't, she couldn't accept the idea that maybe there's a different perspective. Maybe there are things that she hasn't thought about. Maybe there are things that she hasn't noticed because she's been on that one track of female victimhood. Maybe because, you know, she was unable to look at this, that uh, and she's completely locked into that track. But um, I don't know. It, it's it's partly an excuse, but it's also not an excuse. She is in a community. She's in a university. She's in a community that is supposed to be about the exchange of ideas. It's supposed to be not just about having knowledge, but the growth of knowledge. And, and the idea that being a professor means that your purpose is to hand out knowledge and, and, and that eclipses the need for you to continue learning new things is, is ridiculous. Any other field, um, when new information comes out, you're expected to keep up with it. Feminists, when new information comes out, they freak out like it's an attack. And this is one of those situations. New information has come out, and they're freaking out and treating it as an attack. They can't grow with the new knowledge that's available. They can't realize that there's people within their movements who are creating and and uh, promoting false statistics and a false narrative and, and police themselves. But instead, they have to sit there and circle the wagons and defend ideas that that are are as toxic as they claim the men's rights movement is and uh, this thing you know the idea that that uh the idea that she espoused which essentially is that that sexual abuse of boys in juvenile facilities isn't abuse or isn't she basically tried to claim nonviolent but it's not violent uh because they liked it and because they were friendly with their abusers, um, which is, it's kind of difficult to measure either of those things in a setting where it's an authority figure uh, involved with someone whose lives they have complete lives they have complete control over. But even if what she said was true, even if it was a, a situation where the boys enjoyed themselves, and even if it was a situation where they were friendly with their abusers. At that age, when it's underage like that, that does not make it not abuse. It simply means that that individual that abused the child did so in a way that is manipulative or manipulative and psychologically damaging. So this is a something that she should have been able to figure out. She should not have needed people to tell her this. She shouldn't have had uh, difficulty with this. And And yet here we have this this response from her that that she put out there strictly in the sense of circling the wagons. She had to counter an argument against the claim that, that men don't need men's spaces to discuss men's issues. And you know, when you're dealing with a person that has their head buried that far up their ass... You know, where where do you go? How do you have a dialogue with that? That's that's a good question. Uh, Crystal, what have you got? Uh, well, I think a big reason uh, these feminists do not want to acknowledge, um, you know, men suffering uh, is because, the, exactly as it's been uh, been said, that they would have to really acknowledge that their their part in humanity. Like they would have to. They're they're so they're. They are the taste of female supremacy is too good for them to let go. Uh, if they were to actually acknowledge men as also suffering, then they would have to acknowledge the fact that they are part of a human race in which humans suffer, and then that brings them down to earth with the rest of us. And uh, the taste of female supremacy is too good for them. Uh, they see themselves as above. They see themselves as they need to teach the world, you know, and teach men and all this other crap. And if they were to, if they were to receive the fact that that's a load of crap and they would have to recognize the fact that men are victims 
they would have to face themselves. They would have to face their own part in that as well. And that's some scary crap to face. If, you know, because that would, that would also mean that they're not these goddesses, you know, that they're human beings. Uh, and, and female supremacy to them is just too good to let go of. So they cannot, it's like they have this aversion to being a human being because it just doesn't fit with their, their female supremacy views. Yeah, the, the toughest person to uh, answer to is always the one staring back at you from the mirror. What have yeah. you got for us, Lucian? Yeah, well, <clears throat> Crystal just st- stole my words. She, she just, like, read my mind. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. They still, uh, these kinds of ideologues, such as Ad- Ad- Adèle Mercier, they see themselves as, a- as above of everyone else. They are the anointed ones. They are the ones who are supposed to lead the masses. And usually these kinds of people tend to be, um, how do I put it, not so decent human beings. I mean, Al asked at the beginning of this topic uh, that how could she say that given the fact that she has at least two sons? Well, uh, you're implying that she's a decent, decent human being. I personally do not believe that Adèle Mercier or other ideologues like her, Germaine Greer or what, whatnot, I don't believe these kinds of people are decent human beings to, believe, to begin with. Uh, I don't, uh, I don't want to call them psychopaths or something, but at least, at the very least, they're not, uh, decent human beings. They're not human beings as, uh, as we would understand that term. Uh, and frankly, I, we believe her she's a feminist, or at least I do. Uh, from the moment she says, I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, there you go. That's how a feminist is supposed to be, ha- having no idea what everyone else is talking about. And James said he's not questioning her knowledge, where I do question her knowledge, for the simple reason that she teaches logic, for fuck's sake. I mean, she teaches logic, she was supposed to ask, why do you think my ideas are wrong, instead of going batshit crazy in a rape apologistic manner? Well, I'll I'll take the hit on that one. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yep, I, I can't argue that point. Um... Well, folks, uh, I, I'm at a, I'm at a loss when it when it comes to delving any deeper into this particular subject. Uh, Rachel, what have you got? Well, you know what's happening is that they're being taught that they're crippled by their status as a woman, and the only way to become whole again is to knock men out of their spots. You know that they need to invade their space. You know they've got no room for men as victims, and it's it's really troubling, especially when she has sons. Because when you have that mentality, you're seeing them as potential monsters in the making, potential rapists, and that, you know, everything that you do up until that point is to try and prevent them from becoming what they believe men are. It's terrible. But you know, that's just what I have to say, mostly. And, and folks, I, I do want to go ahead and, and take the time at this point to make the tie between what we're talking about with Adele Mercier and Melody Hensley's super scary PTSD, where once again, what we find, um, and we have some, you know, cohesive, uh, ideas here is that these are people that cannot countenance Victims that are given greater importance than themselves. They cannot countenance it. And when we talk about feminists, we must, by extension, always talk about the status of men in society. It's, it's an absolute must. Patriarchy theory demands that discussion. So any man, be he a uh, soldier who has um, watched his friends, his family, because that's what it is when, when you're next to these guys, who has watched his family be torn apart, and any boy who has been coerced because that is exactly what it is, coerced by individuals who are in 
positions of power into having sex. Their recognition of that tears down patriarchy theory. We brought up a couple of a couple of other good points here. Um, Hannah, I see you there. We'll get to you in just a second. And, and I'm I'm taken back to some things that Fiedelbogen has talked to me before, and the idea of the invasion of male space. Well, this includes the invasion of male suffering. And what it means to be a man in society who has been through some hard times. You must be discounted or you must be absorbed within this, oh, you're being blown up in war, P.S. PTSD is just as bad as my Twitter PTSD, it, according to feminists. That, that too is an invasion of that space. Hannah, go ahead. I see a second connection between these two stories and pretty much everything that we're going to talk about tonight in, in that feminists cannot stand to be questioned. They can't stand to be contradicted. They can't stand the idea that there would be discussion on gender issues of any kind that is outside of their control. And it's really direct with Adele, her, her uh, tirade, her choice to even be there. Um, at that speech and her tirade on the internet were all in response to her aversion to the idea that men might discuss men's issues without feminist control over the discussion. Um, both, both of these incidents though are this. I mean, to, to say that you got post-traumatic stress disorder because someone was repeating and mocking what you said, um, is, it, it's the same, the same issue. It's don't question me, don't argue with me, don't contradict me. You can't contradict me, or I will be upset. And that's that's a consistent thing through uh, through feminism, especially right now. They're really hitting hard on it right now. You can't talk about this without us. You can't talk about this without letting us control what you have to say and where the, what direction the discussion goes in. Well, that was basically it. Uh, Al, what have you got for us? Uh, <clears throat> I was just, uh, you know, first off, just a rhetorical question. Why does it have to be a competition? And secondly, it almost reminds me of, of uh, uh, the, the I don't know how true it really is, but the, the, the story that, you know, uh, Prohibition, back in Prohibition, you know, it was it was essentially, you know, wealthy white women that were, you know, trying to, you know, get alcohol illegalized. I mean, they, you know, they didn't want us to have our own space because men were going to these pubs and places and, you know, not staying home listening to the harpies. So they pushed for prohibition. I mean, I mean, I'm sure I'm, I'm twisting the facts just a hair, but essentially that was one of, I remember a poster or something to the effect of, uh, any man's lips that touches alcohol shall never touch these or something like that. I mean, it didn't so, have a bunch of really grouchy looking women on it. Yeah. They all look like haggards. I mean, they're like, Oh, I'm going to go get drunk. Yeah. Well, what the hell? What do you think they go to the damn far bar for? Well, that's the same thing with the male, male spaces. I mean, you know, you have these clubs and it's, oh, you can't do that because that's where, you know, can't have male only golf tournaments and can't have male only this because that's where business is done. But yet women only spaces, so to speak, are, are cropping up everywhere. It's like, it's all about control. I really believe it. You know, it's, it's a matter of, well, you know what? We, we want to be in charge and you will have to do what we say. And it could be, you know, just their, their, their narcissistic tendencies or it's actually, they really believe that, you know, it's, it's, it's our turn and we're going to make you pay. It's payback time. You know, I mean, maybe I'm just, you know, seeing the, uh, the evils of, of society and people in general and I'm just too damn jaded, but that's how it looks like to me. 
Uh, Crystal, go ahead. I would definitely have to agree that they do have that mentality of payback, which makes no sense. I don't understand what they feel they're paying back, because in order for them to believe that, that, again, means that they completely dismiss that men have ever suffered in the entire <laughs> realm of existence. It's this arrogance that, and, and just mindlessness that women have been the only ones that have suffered. And any time a woman has suffered, it's a man's fault. It had nothing to do with any outside forces. It had nothing to do with them. It is men's fault. If they don't have the perfect life, if any woman does not have a perfect life, and if she ever has to struggle ever, well, that is the fault of men. And it's and it's just this weird, they, they have this really warped story to excuse themselves from being abusers. They're being abusive and saying, well, you know, I can because it's men's fault. It, it's really sick. And, yeah, uh, and, and all, all valid points I see here. And uh, I will go ahead and wrap this segment up. Uh, with a little bit of history on the women's petition against coffee written in 1674. Now, this was back in the time when women were casually led along uh, with chains on their necks and beaten mercilessly uh, 28 hours a day and then bent over logs and <laughs> raped uh, 29 hours out of the day, okay? According to feminists, mind you. Except on Sundays. Except on Sundays, that's right. And then, yeah, then it was 30 hours. Then it was 30, and, and it was no, used... except in the state of South Carolina. You're supposed to beat them on Sundays. Oh, <laughs> well, you, hey, there's... Was there's... that before or after the sandwich? Did she make the sandwich first? <laughs> it depends on, how, how depends, on, it depends on how many times you had to tell her, which usually equated to how many black eyes she had. Followed now, by the spanking and the oral sex, right? Uh, there we go. <laughs> But in any case, what we see here is, in 1974, this women's petition against coffee. And these women, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, <laughs> 1674. These women actually had the audacity to write the king of all people and essentially say, you need to ban these coffee houses. Now, this, this was in England, mind you, that this happened. You need to ban these coffee houses because it's making our men sterile and impotent. They're becoming Frenchified. Woo, love nationalism. And they're not fucking us enough. That's essentially what they wrote. Granted, it was in their own language. Translate to our men are going off and having a good time and they're not spending enough time at home fucking us and making us making our hips splay and our asses fat as a result. Once again, anytime we see that men have these spaces, feminists or those of a similar ideological ilk come in and try to remove this. It is dangerous for men to gather together and think on our own. It is a dangerous thing. And it's not just the feminists that recognize this. So consider how the Adele Mercers of the world are doing what they do with a sanction to do it. All right, folks, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next subject. <laughs> there was a segment that played this morning on the 6.40 a.m. Oakley show, and of all people, they had Susan Cole of the Canadian Now. Her and, I guess, one of her cohorts advocate against free speech and embrace the use of of governing authority to silence dissent. Now, I probably need to remind a few people here, particularly U.S. listeners, that Canada does not have 
a codified First Amendment. They do have some protections on free speech, but nothing like what we have in the United States. Codified in law, mind you. Okay? Not what's actually going on in practice. And according to Susan Cole, her idea of the First Amendment equates to a religion, as she says to one of the uh, hosts talking there, you know, be glad that, or, uh, you, you know, if you wanted that type of thing, you need to go south of the border where they treat free speech like a religion. Now, Sounds anybody, like any, for me. A, any, anybody can listen to that segment. All you have to do is go to the show page, and you'll see it. And go in there, and it'll be number three. Number three. The call-in number is 214-666-6148, and this is the part of the show where we're going to continue our discussion, but we want to continue the discussion with you. So... At this time, I'm going to go ahead and appoint Lucian as the event moderator because I will probably have to field calls um, and take it away. Yeah, I, I didn't uh, g get the time to listen to the entire uh, audio segment, only a, por a part of it, but uh, to me, it really does sound like... Um, a Stalin thing. I mean, Stalin used to believe that free speech is uh, uh, too much of a religion. Uh, Crystal? Oh, I Crystal. don't know where she went. Crystal. Um, Sorry, I had a little issue with my, uh, my microphone button. Um, yeah, I was listening to that and my jaw actually dropped. I... <laughs> Really, I just couldn't believe how casually she was saying this ridiculous, oh, God, it was so outrageous. And, you know, when, when there were male callers coming in, she was just completely dismissing them. And there was another female speaking. I, I Her, I don't know her name, but uh, they were kind of in cahoots in their little corner. And uh, they were dismissing men. Oh, all the men that call in, they're just so angry. I, I don't understand. You know, they're such angry men. Like, as if to use the fact that they were angry, as if they had no valid reason to be angry, as if that was the reason that they should shut up because they were angry. Um, it was so appalling to listen to her. And, and she says things so casually and so nonchalant that it's, I, uh, God, I don't know. It was it was pretty grotesque, and the fact that she really believes this, she really believes it's okay to shut up anybody who disagrees with her. Anybody who disagrees with her, well, that's valid because she said so. Yeah, but Crystal, that anger is hurting her feelings, <laughs> and <laughs> you, you need to take to be careful with these kinds of special <laughs> snowflakes. Oh, no. I end up with post talk show distress disorder. Yes, oh, post gosh. talk show distress. Oh, oh <laughs> PTSD post talk show distress. <laughs> oh gosh, folks, uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, bring bring somebody on the air. Um, we're gonna go ahead and bring Nefanor uh, to the call. Welcome to the show, Nefanor. Hi. Hello, hello, hello. He's beaming in. Hello. Hello, Alien. Yes, I'm beaming in to probe everyone, so uh, everyone bend over. <laughs> Bending. Do I have to make a sandwich first? Uh, no, no. You're good this time. Uh, just wanted to comment here. They're, as you said, that they're treating, uh, she's calling free speech a religion. The irony is feminism is a religion, and it's about time we separated church and state. Yeah. Fucking A. Yeah. Here, here. <laughs> And oh, damn, course, that was we need them to get back and make sandwiches. Right. <laughs> damn right. <laughs> that is a really good point, though. Feminists do treat... Yeah. They treat feminism... They treat feminist ideology like it is a sac sacred text. Um, and I don't know if you've ever... And rape is their sacred cow. Yeah. Yeah. But it, yeah. Just, it, if you've ever been in one of the more... Um, 
like the small town really devout churches and you see the way Bibles are handled. It's, it's a lot like that, um, with feminist ideology. You can't question anything. If it doesn't add up, it's the will of God. And, and if you point out that it doesn't add up, um, instead of trying to discuss it and maybe, you know, come up with theories and, and, and figure things out, it's blasphemer! And, or in this uh, case, misogynist! Yes, misogynist is feminist for blasphemer. You're against that, that progress. That's basically all it is. Yeah, it's very true. And feminist, I, I could, uh, feminism is a flat earth ideology. And this is why I find it so amusing whenever I hear about feminists invading the secular community because, well, they're invading it with a religion. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. why it's not compatible. And that's Does why they're compute. kind of destroying uh, atheist spaces. Yep. Well, only the ones that are becoming atheist plus, and those ones yeah. can die a horrible death on the vine, please. Yep, they can. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... Look, don't be so against progress. I mean, what's the matter with you? Why are you so angry? Why are you so against progress? I mean, come on. <laughs> well, you, you because I prefer... Love that. Oh, wait, Why no, I don't so prefer angry? Congress. Damn it. <laughs> Progress must progress. But you, you gotta love the thing about the anger. I mean, if, if you turn that around on them, you could say the same thing about pretty much everything they articulate. Uh, we live in a rape culture. Oh, you're just an angry white woman. Why are you so angry? Stop oh, talking to this. You don't like this. Rape. <laughs> this is not that big of an woman. issue. Wow. You know, they're gonna, they're gonna ban that along with bossy. Be careful. Oh, yeah. Usually, oh, usually yeah. when there's angry white women, you end up with a bunch of angry white male cops, uh, yeah. busting down your door. Uh, Nefanor, uh, we really appreciate the call, man. But, uh, hey, I'm starting to get stacked up here. Uh, we're going right. to let you go. You got any parting words for us? Uh, I'm going to probe all of you. <laughs> and of course. Thank you. It's uh, my YouTube channel. Thank Wonderful. you, sir. May I yeah. have another? <laughs> well, uh, we'll, t we'll talk about the probing later on. I'll critique you on it. <laughs> <laughs> James, you go ahead and start without me, buddy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, folks, we, we do have another caller. Uh, we're going to go ahead and transfer her at this time. Uh, everybody, I, I would really like to welcome this person with a great big woohoo to the show. Um, welcome to the show, Judgy Bitch. Yay, Judgy Bitch. Hi, thanks for having me. Oh, oh there goes gosh. the damn neighborhood. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I listened to the radio show, and two things struck me in particular. One, okay, obviously, the utter hypocrisy of someone claiming that feminists do not shout down dissenting voices by essentially shouting down dissenting <laughs> voices. <laughs> and number two, very early on in the conversation, um, the Susan G. Cole turned to someone and said, you're patronizing me. And then she went on to patronize the shit out of everyone else. Oh, thank you for your very selective reading of Canadian law. Oh, like that's not totally patronizing. But you know what really interests me? This is, and this is what I don't get, possibly because I have no social skills, but why didn't everyone shut that fucking fat battle axe down? The only reason she was allowed to shout down everyone, the only reason she was allowed to engage in that kind of utterly preposterous hypocrisy it's because the people on the show allowed it. They backed into polite, courteous, um, just sort of human dignity mode, and it doesn't work. These loud mouthed, insane, completely hypocritical bitches will just drown out everyone if we cannot stand up and scream them down in their face. Why, why are we doing this? Why are we letting those bitches scream us down? Because she has the vajayjee. 
Well, yeah. I got one too, and I can fucking scream. Let me tell you uh, that. Or, I'm sorry. Or, yeah, but you're not a you're not a special oh. snowflake. Well, you you see you see oh. un, unlike places like this, where where the where the master of the castle has the ability to shut down whomever the fuck he chooses. The host of that show is actually beholden to whoever's paying the bills for that radio station and whoever the sponsors are. And and that is that is a very unfortunate thing. I I can only imagine uh what I would be thinking sitting there going fuck I'm making a $100,000 a year. Uh if I talk back to this fucking Bitch, I am going to get so fired. There goes my house, my car, my wife, and my kids. Right, and I wasn't calling out John Oakley at all. In fact, I was very amazed because John Oakley did a marvelous transition where he started out skeptical, and by the end of it, he was kind of laughing at her for, you know, when she turned to him and said, John, you don't understand the question, and then, like, backpedal, backpedal, backpedal. Oh, I'm sure you do understand the question. Like, he must have given her just the most wicked fucking look across the studio as soon as she was there. But what about the other guests? I mean, why... I don't understand why... Maybe it's just lack of training for moderators. Could it be that? They don't really know how to deal with these battle-axe women who are so dedicated to shutting down debate. Maybe we just don't have the training. We're not used to this level of fascism. No, no, we're 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 not used to this level of fascism. In fact, I can honestly say that uh, there's only one person uh, in this right, particular table. Right, stop! I'm talking. Uh, they're, they're... Okay, see, we're not used to it. You just like totally bounced <laughs> like, me there. Oh, you no. should have said, "I'm fucking talking." Oh God, no! Hold on. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Can I have I my balls back now? And you bow. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> Any, anyway, there, there's there's only there's only one person sitting at this table who's who's actually used to that level of fascism, and that would probably be Lucian. Um, and and my understanding is how they dealt with it was with illegal typewriters. Right, Lucian? And violence. Yes, Ill- illegal typewriters, uh, illegal manifestos, and violence. I mean, there's no way to sugarcoat it. Uh, in order to get rid of that shit, it required violence. And, uh, and, that, and that was for the for the overthrow of, of a regime yep. which was essentially um, destroying its own people. Yes. It was just crazy the way that Susan dominated that conversation because everyone else was courteous. I mean, the time for courtesy is apparently past. Although, I have to say that listening to it, I'm, I'm not exactly objective, but listening to it, I think she put nails in her own coffin. I mean, it was absolutely obvious that when you scream down opponents that you, in fact, don't scream down opponents, it's just the cognitive dissonance was a little alarming. Yep, sounds like the, like, like the great National Assembly. Uh, uh, I've seen that happening in 87. When someone stood up to Ceausescu in the National Assembly and said, wait a minute, comrades, you're all wrong. And you're out of your fucking minds. And uh, pretty much all of the audience or most of it started shouting down that person whilst that that person was trying. Yes. Romania. uh, Yep. And the the rest of the audience was trying to shout down, to shout down that person whilst uh, he was trying to make a point. And uh, that's how the, the the communist media spinned it. Uh, they said that, that that person was not shouted down, but uh, uh, the, the dialectics of Marxism-Leninism prevailed. And that's pretty much how feminists are spinning it. Uh, we're not shouting down dissenters, uh, but the, the feminist analysis turned out to be uh, better than the analysis of the opposition. Wow. It's pretty much the same shit. Uh- <laughs> Same shit, and I think the inevitable conclusion here is that the only one that can shout down another woman is a woman. That the minute a man, even you don't even have to raise your voice, you just have to choose words that have a hard consonant ending to be declared angry men, and then all of a sudden you're dismissed. So I, I think we're at a point where the voices of women in this movement, as 
fucking ironic and infuriating as that is, have become absolutely vital. That the only way a battle axe is going to shut her fucking cock holster and listen for a second is if another woman challenges her. Go ahead, Hannah. <laughs> well, this is a really this is a really good point. Um, and and the reason behind it is the difference between how women are aggressive and how men are aggressive. And I'm not saying that women are never physically violent with each other, but I think women more often are sneaky in the ways in which we are aggressive. Um, and what what you see with these women who who uh, bulldog, you know, in, in these conversations and just dominate everybody is this this type of relational aggression where they shame people for contradicting them or they um you know they they say differently than they behave and it's expected that people will believe them and if you call them on their their actions their behavior then they get you know butt hurt over it instead of uh actually thinking about what they're doing they don't have to and it we are so accustomed as a society to tolerating relational aggression from women that it's people just bow down to it and and people just especially men men because they're not allowed to um they're not allowed to fight back if they fight back they're mean if they fight back they're abusive you know if they even even with relational aggression even if they fight back with similar tactics and when women do it, it's catty, but it's it's a female thing. So it's funny that they're doing it, and and people are entertained. As soon as a man does it, it's abusive. And, and then the way society sees it that way, that gives a, a level of power to bossy women, and that is why uh, why feminists want that word banned. They don't want women to be called out on that kind of behavior. But that gives a level of power to bossy women. To wow. dominate these conversations. Did, did yeah. Al, Al, did you have something to say about uh, Susan Cole's bossy cock holster? What? <laughs> yeah, I was uh, actually just to, to you know uh, re- expand a little bit on what JB was saying and uh, and Hannah. Um, you know, we have social media. That's what this world is all about now. And I mean, you know, whether it's sexist or not to say it, uh, women run this, the, the, the social media world. I mean, you know, they're the ones to use that stuff. I mean, I just found out today how to get on Twitter for crying out loud. I mean, you know, that's so, so my, my point where I'm going with this is that. Oh, be careful, if, if, Al. You can get post traumatic stress syndrome from, from Twitter. I hope you know that. Oh, I mean, shut I'm your you're damn a combat oh, veteran up. and you're familiar with this, but you, Twitter, it can be just as bad as combat. Oh, is that what it is? Oh, wow. Well, anyways, thanks for sharing that with me. <laughs> no, sir. Uh, but well, now I'm going to lose where I was going. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, uh, uh, the uh, the, uh, the moderator, the uh, uh, the radio personality there, and you know, and James had made mention about how you know, well, he's you know, he's got to follow the rules because of the who pays the bills. Well, the other thing is, is getting back to the social media I just mentioned. If this guy would have tried to shut her cock holster down, he would have been crucified via social media by women. That's that's a reality. I mean, you know, people don't want to admit it, but women, they can organize a hell of a lot better than men do on a lot of things. And when it comes down to, you know, jumping on the bandwagon and condemning some pig, that's evil, evil, evil to some poor widow woman's. <laughs> they all jump on, even the ones that aren't the radical nutballs. They all jump on. Not, I mean, obviously, you know, there are some that don't like, uh, you know, Judgy and, and Hannah and a few others here. But for the most part, a lot of them, you know, they all jump on the bandwagon and, and, and it, a man will literally disintegrate. He, he will self destruct. Because inside of, uh, you know, a day, two days, three days, the, 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 the lamestream media will get a hold of the story and then they'll perpetuate it even more. And then more women will jump on board and then the white knights jump on board. And the next thing you know, there's millions of people petitioning to get this guy fired because, because why? He, he, he wouldn't let her, you know, sit there and slander him because he was a big mean man because he, you know, told her to shut the hell up for a minute. I mean, that's, that's the reality is he, you know, they, they just can't do anything about it. 
Rachel. Oh, what, what I think is, the lovely is, irony is when the trenches are actually holes dug in the ground and the ammunition is bullets, we send men out there to die, right? Get the fucking men out there. But when the trenches are Twitter feeds and the bullets are tweets, your best defense in the trenches is women. So it's time to fucking rock up and pay for centuries of men's bodies in trenches. It's really, really women who have got to be on the front line and be willing to take some hits for this. And I don't know, I'm willing to take it because personally, tweet, tweets don't give me post-traumatic stress syndrome. <laughs> Well, you know, it's it's actually very difficult to engage these feminists on social media because a lot of them are really prone to just silencing dissent the second it happens. They'll, they'll ban you, they'll kick you off, because they really don't want to hear opinions that are different from their own. They, they denounce it as hate speech. And that's why, you know, you had Susan Cole saying, oh, you know, it's totally okay for those feminists at Queen's University, well, no, Ottawa University, sorry, to, to silence, you know, Dr. Fiamengo, it's totally fine for that to happen, but if they, if they silence Ayan Christie Ali, oh, you know, that's just terrible, because she's a feminist, and she totally agrees with everything I do. I mean, it's, it's just obvious hypocrisy and, bi and bias right there, you know? It, it's, it's ridiculous. True. Hannah, maybe it's we obvious. need to be a little bit smart and don the uniform of the enemy. Now, how can we spin ourselves as feminists. What kind of feminists can we be? Can we, we be, um, like, cock-friendly feminists? There's oh, gotta God. be some <laughs> kind of feminist oh, we can be. Well, let's see. There's gender feminists and the so-called equity or equality feminists no, um, those are who are showing themselves to, to uh, not be 100% what they claim either. Um... I mean, I'd say we we could be anti-feminists. Yeah, or, I'm already one of those. Or or kind of, or, the, you know, that's aggressive and it makes me have a sad. And now I have some more PTSD. Or or I, even or even be, even just even just, word, yeah. even just the word, even just the word non-feminist, ah. even just <laughs> the word non-feminist uh, well, is I, is is a very important construct and, and I'm once once again um, I'm gonna borrow from from a friend of mine uh, Fido Bogan the the idea of the word non-feminist will put feminists in a tizzy because they can't classify any other position that you might have mm -hmm. other than the fact that you're not a feminist you can't classify well, you anything else. Like, keep your enemies close. I mean, we don't want non. That's a binary. It suggests an opposition. That's obviously patriarchal. That's like a one-zero thing. And math is the patriarchy. Like, gravity holds you down. <laughs> um, <laughs> what we need to do is have, like, an, an alternate feminism that's, like, super really close to feminism that we can snuggle up to them. <laughs> And kiss them, and then strangle them. <laughs> matriarchy theory. We could have matriarchy yeah! theory. We could be male right positive yeah. feminists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Matriarchy. Yes, we have, to, we have to bring down the matriarchy. The matriarchy causes all the problems in the world, and and therefore, therefore, uh, we we have to completely destroy it. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> a, a, absolutely. Oh, my God. Absolutely. Uh, I know. Peni feminists. There we <laughs> go. We're living in a matriarchal society that's oppressing us. <laughs> Matriarchy hurts anti-feminists, too, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Matriarchy hurts anti-feminists, too. If you shut the fuck up, we're working on it. <laughs> this I this. I didn't I'm going to need some men splaining. I'm really sorry, cool. I'm just lost. <laughs> Your vagina splaining here. <clears throat> oh. Oh, she's <laughs> Oh, that was good. I like that. I got to remember that one. The vagina splaining. Oh, well, there vagina we go. Writing that one down, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, well, I just want to get back a little bit to what what Al said about the fact that women uh, actually control social media. Well, uh, 
most of what he said is very true and it's it's also very un PC to say that women in general are a bit more collectivist minded. And that's true. I mean Warren Farrell said it, Harry Bitty told it. We 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 know it's true. And well, it depends the f- on the circumstance, right? But if you take war or sports, I would say that men are very collectivist. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, but in in the context of social media, we can see that very, very clear. Uh, and also in the context of voting, Warren Farrell has a great, great chapter about that, about voting patterns amongst women and how they mm-hmm. tend to vote left, especially when they're not married. Um, and uh, anyway, in the context of social media... Al brought up a very important point, the fact that most women or a significant proportion of women, especially those who use social media frequently, will jump on a bandwagon to crucify uh, any man anywhere uh, if that man dares to disagree with the with the poor little special snowflake who's so oppression under patriarchy and so women's hate and whatnot. So <clears throat> given that aspect, JB is correct to say that there are there is a strong need of more women to say these kinds of things that we've we've been saying here on the shows, and uh, yeah, uh, classifying themselves or ourselves as a non-feminist brings us another uh, another perk. We can actually say we're part of the non-feminist majority, because let's not let's not forget gynocentrists might be a majority on this planet. But feminists, nope, feminists are a tiny, tiny minority on this planet. That and, is very true. Good. And, and, and by, by labeling yourself as a non-feminist, you can actually say, no, I'm part of the, si- of, of the until now silent non-feminist majority. Ever heard of the concept of silent majority? Take it, bitch. This is the non-feminist majority speaking. Well, we also have to be able to open our mouths a little bit louder than them. Right now, that's the only reason why the world follows them, because okay, they I'm got sorry. the I'm bigger mouths. I'm going to demand a little equality in terminology, too. Um, <laughs> you don't open your mouth. You open your cock holster, just like everybody else. <laughs> well, I don't why know about you, you but I don't do anything with cocks in my mouth. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Oh, mercy. Ah, James, where do you get these people? <laughs> oh, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just um, the lucky one. I, I am the lucky one. <laughs> it, it's, it's, look, hey, my, my job <laughs> is to keep everybody else entertained. So I need to go out and just find all the, all the crazy wackadoos that I can and, and put them, put them on the air. Mighty um, fine, I have fine I'm damn job you're doing. Found me a in forward the tumbler yeah. box. That's what I found me. You gotta beware, judges. One of these days, you're gonna ask somebody to open their cock holder, and they're gonna fart in your general direction. <laughs> oh, no. oh my god! I had three brothers. I've had pe- men farting on my head since I was born. <laughs> that means you've suffered a tremendous amount of gender violence, judges. <laughs> I mean, really, really. Oh, you, no. you have to remember, under the Spanish oh, law. Under the Spanish law, and I'm not joking here, until 2012, under the Spanish law, a man could go up to three years in jail for gender violence for farting in the immediate vicinity of a woman. I am not That's joking. That's not true. No, yes, it is so, so true. No, I'm not joking. So that means, <laughs> Judgy, that you have been suffering such a tremendous amount of, uh, of gender violence throughout your life. No wonder you, you're my thinking that you might have PTSD. Oh, Guess no, there are no, no Dutch uh, ovens uh, in Spain. In, in fact, <laughs> I was just going to ask if there were any Dutch ovens. Who beat me to it? <laughs> in fact, Farting is, is, is gender. <laughs> in, in fact, Judgy, I, I would say that the reason why, you're, why you are on this show is because you are actually suffering from an advanced case of Stockholm Syndrome. Oh. So it, on those really like weird sort of strange, I don't really know what's going on, but sometimes air gets pumped in and your vagina farts. Is that? Oh, that's a fart too? Too? That's the patriarchy that's taking over. Okay. That's the <laughs> once, once again, the nature of the very nature of physics itself is absolutely patriarchal. <laughs> Be Maybe we should start calling it fartriarchal, like somebody on the 
this oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Fartriarchy. This <is> the patriarchy. <laughs> Smash the patriarchy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 guys. We are we are getting really, really nutty and and out of hand with this. Um, I think I'm drunk. You you, you invited uh, you alone. <laughs> yeah, the is going to be so much fun. Can you valid. imagine us all live? And, and oh, isn't it? <laughs> oh, we are we are live, folks. This We're is going right out now. over the airwaves. This is totally unedited. I can only imagine. <laughs> Only imagine the PTSD that Susan Cole is getting right now from having voluntarily tuned into a show in which we were going to talk to her. No doubt she will say that it was patriarchal oppression that forced her to sit there and listen to the train wreck that our show has become. Definitely going to have post uh, talk show (laughs) stress disorder. Well, she's but been in, cyber fart raped, you know? There we go. <laughs> yes. There we go. And, How dare and, we cyber fart rape her? And, and now, yes. and, and now we, we can say, we can say in, in all of this, um, that Susan Cole, if you had your way, we would indeed be blaming Canada. <laughs> oh, yeah. We farts. We are we are gonna go ahead and and move to our next segment. It's like the parents show all over again. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna move on, folks. We're we're moving on. And for for this one, <laughs> can't even. You guys stop talking out of your ass, please. Uh, for this one, we're we're gonna we're gonna go on to our next segment. Kathy Young, okay. Uh, Kathy Young has been sort of a uh, thorn in in AVFM's side for quite some time now. Now she's come along and she's said on a regular basis, "I'm for men and boys. Uh, I identify as a feminist, but I'm a friendly one to men and boys. I don't agree with everything the feminist establishment is doing." Uh, I, I, I hope men and boys do better. Uh, but unfortunately, AVFM is a misogynistic piece of shit website and nobody should listen to anything that they say. Now, <gasps> this one, the subject of Kathy Young wouldn't have even come up had it not been for, uh, some tweets that occurred earlier today. Uh, and for this, Hannah, I'm going to go ahead and let you introduce the rest of the topic. Penis. <laughs> oh, well, the, the beginning of this, and I, I cannot remember the individual who was actually tweeting to Dean, um, but the beginning of this was that uh, another Twitterer referenced uh, our, our replies to uh, her Boston Globe article in which she went, she gave a good rundown of uh, several men's issues and and why the men's rights movement is so legitimate, without saying that the men's rights movement is legitimate, and then went on to talk about why she thought um, <clears throat> leaders in the the ah, uh, and chat has uh, it's I'm gonna butcher this guy's name probably, but. Jacques Cous, I think, is how it's pronounced. Um, but in any case, uh, referenced our reply to her article in which she gave that great rundown of, you know, men's issues, what men's issues are, and then essentially said that men don't need to talk about them. That um, men are too angry, too loud, too brash, too whatever, and that it's hurting the men's rights movement the complaints are hurting the men's rights movement. The anger is hurting the men's rights movement. Um, and, and of course, that's actually the incident that the Honey Badger Brigade was kind of born out of, because we all kind of felt the need to respond to that. Um, one of the things that we felt the need to respond to was that she pretty much blatantly ignored the fact that there are women involved in the movement, and she has done so consistently since then as well. And... Yeah, I, I will go on record right now. Kathy Young has every right to talk, every right to say whatever she thinks that she should say. 
um, and, and describe what her theories are and what her opinions are and, and articulate her thoughts any way she sees fit. And it's really too bad that she can't afford other people that same right. But for some reason, as part of her speech in the world, she, she really doesn't see fit to afford other people that same right. And in particular, other women who disagree with her perspective. She's not willing to share the discussion. And I think it's partly, personally, I think it's partly because she sees the discussion as a spotlight. Because as soon as um, a voice for men began to grow in the discussion arena to a point where it's it was getting referenced more often than many other uh, many other sources of information. That's when she had to step up and go on the attack like that. So that's basically the situation with Kathy Young. This discussion uh, expanded as some of the tweets going back and forth uh, contained at Kathy Young and and her her Twitter. She began to respond. And, of course, I joined into the discussion, and she responded to Dean, and she responded to Jacques. She didn't really respond to me. And uh, we began to bring up women in the movement and statements made by women in the movement, and she responded to Dean, and she responded to Jacques, and she didn't respond to the discussion about women. So that's really my uh, my big issue with this. Is, is this idea that she's got to ignore the fact that there are women in the men's rights movement and uh, that she's got to try to shame the movement into silence instead of being able to share the discussion with all of us. I'd say uh, that's, some, that's some pretty heavy shit. Uh, go ahead, Al. Well, I was going to get to that point, but she she did it a hell of a lot better than me. But that's exactly how I see it. I think I think she she Kathy that is is uh, you know she sees this this spotlight that's definitely going to get brighter. There's no question about it, and she wants to be a part of it. And she she wants to be the one woman that stood up for those guys, those poor widow men's. She she's not going to step step back and acknowledge that. You know, a very large amount of the people that are involved with AVFM are female. And a very large amount are male. And we're all working together. It's not, it's not, you know, uh, it's not a, a, a big gender thing where, you know, we have to have the men in charge and the women in charge and all that crap. You know, and I think she just, she, I don't know where I'm going with this, but I think she just wants the spotlight, just like Hannah said. I think that's that's really what it boiled down to, and intentionally ignoring the women that we have in our in our in, in our area, not just in the movement, but in AF, AVFM, ignoring them is is that's typical. I mean, you know, you're gonna ignore them. Well, oh no, we don't. I don't want to. I don't even want to acknowledge them. Not those girls. No, not those little girls. We're, we're gonna we're gonna bring somebody else on the air here. Um, uh, you guys would know him as Nightwing, and uh, Nightwing, welcome to the show. Um, what are your opinions on the Kathy Young matter? Well, actually, I want to go back to something that Al was just saying about how she, she wants to be the one woman fighting for the men, and it kind of tracks with. It kind of tracks with something I've been seeing from my time as a pickup artist. And... Hello? Oh, we, we hear you. Go ahead, man. Keep talking. Yeah, like I was saying, it, it tracks with something I've been noticing since my time as a pickup artist, that everybody, both male and female to some extent, they're always trying to put themselves out ahead of everybody else. They're trying to show they're better than everybody else. If you notice the white knight, it's it's usually prevalent. They're trying to be that one great guy to get the attention of the females. <laughs> and I think that that's part of 
where our dating life has gone in the current scenario is we're trying to put ourselves out to the point that we are, there's no one better. You know what I'm saying? Any, anyone want to take this? Lucien, go ahead. Yeah, it's... Um, yeah, well, it's definitely also about the spotlight, no doubt about it. But we must remember that Kathy Young is, at the end of the day, a feminist. And for a feminist, well, female MRAs or honey badgers are anathema. They are poo-poo. They can't exist. They're Satan. They simply don't exist. And they can't exist because if they do, then Kathy Young's entire worldview goes to dust. Because Kathy Young, at the end of the day, doesn't see things in terms of uh, individual rights or human rights for individuals who are <clears throat> fucked around by uh, by the state or by other corridors of power in the academia and so on and so forth. No, no, no. She still sees things as a men versus women thing. And that's that, that that's the, the huge dividing point between everyone else and Kathy Young. Fair enough. I believe, so, I so what, 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 what uh, as well? my my question is is uh, what exactly is she uh, subscribing to? I, I mean, she I think she first came out uh, whenever she was writing about um, uh, the dear colleague letter. I think was one of the very first times I had ever heard about her, and her essentially saying that due process was not being <clears throat> not being extended to people who were accused of sexual assault on campus, uh, and the fact that she worried for you know her own son over the matter. If I'm not mistaken, that that's right. I mean that is where. AVFM really sort of started looking at Kathy Young, right? Well, she's, right. she's essentially an equity feminist, but she's still a feminist. I mean, you know, equity makes it sound, you know, like feminism light, you know, like it's some, it's, it's somehow a better version. No, it's not. It's not it, evil light, but it's, it's evil light. Yeah. Less than crazy. Yeah. I mean, she's still, she's still a nutball. Okay. So she may, she may say, you know, uh, you know, men and women must work together and instead of saying, you know, women must be this and women must be that. So somewhere along the line, she throws the old men in there just to, you know, make it sound better. And that's what equity feminism is about. And uh, to me, it's still feminism. Okay. It's feminist light, but you're still a feminist and you're still a wackadoodle. You know, and, and I don't want anything to do with you. And you, you know, you're not the type of woman that I would want to sit and have a conversation with or work with or, or, or do anything with because, I mean, you're looking at me as, as a means to a dollar and not really about, you know, humanity and, and people being treated as, as humans and not, you know, pieces of, uh, chattel and shit like that. Walking ATMs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't have it right in front of me, but um, Kathy Young's writing history actually does go back to the 90s. I think as far back as 93, she um, wrote for the Boston Globe, and she writes for Reason. But uh, it, it, it's... And her writing, she's had many things that she's written with um, a pro-men's rights perspective, but... And I've gone back in the past and read some of her work. Uh, a lot of it still has what I would call the taint of patriarchy theory in that she still attributes a lot of men's issues and a lot of boys' issues to masculinity, um, aspects of masculinity, or areas where men are in control, um, where where systems have not been feminized and uh, or even even just their their nature as boys and men and it's not she doesn't totally attribute those problems to men but uh, she does have a, a, a history of doing that and it's been very subtle 
so it's not been this overt patriarchy hurts men too battle cry that you hear from gender feminists. No, it's, it's, it's more, more of a subtle thing. You yeah. know, she does it covertly. And you know, it, it comes it across time, as, yeah. as she cares about men and boys and women and blah blah blah, but she still prescribes, like you said, prescribes to the whole concept of patriarchy. And if that's true, then you know, you know feminist a feminist light. You're still a feminist. I mean, yeah. it, you know, and That's I have where... read her. I live in New Hampshire, so I, I, I do read the Globe occasionally. You know, it's, it, it's a joke of a newspaper, but, uh, you know, so I've read her stuff and she does. She, she comes across like she cares about us as men and boys, but then there's always that little tiny subtle thing in there. Just like you mentioned, you, you, you hit it right on the nail or right on the head or nail on the head or something to that effect. It, it definitely, I mean, she, it, there's always this little feeling like, yeah, I'm not quite sure. And it, it, it's not like... You cannot turn around and say that it's all uh, feminism's fault or all women's fault or all men's fault. There is no all fault when it comes to uh, either gender's issues. It's what what bothers me about the writing is... The, that I'm seeing the the attribution of men's issues to male systems and masculinity and and male nature in in ways that are that don't ring true. It's like so, taking so the other hand nothing... to... Go ahead, Nightwing. I was gonna say it's like taking the underhanded jab at somebody, you know, just hitting right below just below the belt. Yeah. The ref doesn't always catch it. And and I, I'm going to uh advance this even further. Um this is what gynocentrism has been doing for a very long time. So while a lot of people will look at Kathy Young and will consider her a somewhat reasonable individual, her gynocentric streak is actually a mile wide. And we need to be very wary when dealing with her because the prescribed cure for the ills that men and boys face, she attributes directly to the nature of men and boys and doesn't actually look at uh, anything outside of that very much. Yeah. She will criticize gender feminism but not necessarily um, feminism overall is what I'm seeing. And I just, this is a situation where, you know, you look at people that say, well, I'm a feminist, but I, I do see that men have issues. If you want to know whether or not you can trust that person, ask them to stand up and just bald-faced denounce patriarchy theory. If they can say patriarchy theory is a fat load of horse shit and mean it, <laughs> Yeah, with a straight face, then, then, you know, you can make the next step forward and, and start looking at the idea of trusting them as a, as a, you know, potentially honest well, I, person I would, discussing would, gender issues. I would, I would, I would simply ask the question, are you a feminist? Yeah. Let's, let's start dividing them up that way. Let's, let's do that. Uh, and once again, not an original idea on my part. Um, are you a feminist is a very powerful question. Because this brings the spotlight directly on them, and they know answering in the affirmative uh, might not be kosher. It makes them rethink what the hell they're saying and what the hell they believe in. Um, especially when we consider the idea of the non-feminist majority behind it all. Well, folks, uh, we've touched upon some very interesting subjects tonight. I want to thank everybody here. Nightwing, we do appreciate you calling in. All right. Uh, Lucian, any last words?
Did we lose the show? Oh, no. no. Uh, I hear you. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I was I was about to say that other the, than the fact that Kathy Young sounds uh, comes off to me as a sneaky subverter, uh, I think uh, that's all uh, there is to say. Take the red pill. <laughs> okay. Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Red pill. Hannah. Well, I just want to reiterate the the issue uh, that I'm seeing it with this stepped up dialogue from feminists that is that boils down to. Men don't have the right to discuss men's issues outside of, of feminist control. They are panicking at not being able to control the discussion. And it is, um, it's imperative that we continue to make them panic. So keep talking about men's issues completely outside of feminine, feminist control. And when, when you get told that you shouldn't be doing that, just tell them to fuck off and keep talking. And, uh, Swallow that red pill. Crystal. Uh, yeah, I think the, the reason, feminists don't want equality. That's just, it's not even true. They just want superiority. And the reason they're so terrified of the men's human rights movement is because it actually does bring forward equality. Uh, well, as far, you know, equal rights. And so it's terrifying to them because then they actually have to do something. Then they actually have to act like human beings and they can't throw tantrums and, you know, uh, they can't just be ex- excused for their criminal behavior just because vagina. So, so yes, that's what I gotta say about that. Rachel. We really can't, um, make any progress until we just really acknowledge what's happening here. And they're just really trying to silence dissent just across the board. So, you know, let your voice be heard and don't be afraid to, to speak. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well. <laughs> and if you come across one of these, uh, you know, vagina splainers. <laughs> <laughs> Matriarchy. <laughs> <laughs> Tell her to shut her cock That's holster up and eat a damn red pill. <laughs> <laughs> Just shove oh, there, a whole there, bunch of them down her throat. Just like there, there we go. And and I I do want to send a big 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 thank you out to the following people, uh, Melody Hensley. Thank you so much, and especially thank you for your PTSD. Uh, has provided <laughs> us with innumerable amount of entertainment tonight. Adele Mercier. Uh, what more can I say? Your name says it all. Uh, we would also like to thank Susan Cole of Canadian Now. Um, without her cock holster, we wouldn't have had near as much fun as what we did tonight. Uh, and, and of course, uh, we, we can't leave out Kathy Young. Uh, Kathy, treading on thin ice here. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what your problem is. You, you need, you need to really rethink what the hell's going on. And, and of course, uh, to the University of Wisconsin, uh, for actually starting up a post doctorate for feminist biology. <laughs> what the fuck are you thinking? Oh my God. And, um, to, to whoever's making ass sounds, uh, really appreciate it. <laughs> Folks, this is this is the end <laughs> of the not so impromptu MRA live discussion on Live 365. We will be having more of these in the future uh, when the honey badgers decide to slack off or tell the radio director to go fuck himself. Uh, this is essentially what we're going to be doing. And when our wonderful interviewer Robert O'Hara decides uh, to take the night off, we'll be doing this as well. So. Mm. With that, we need better fart noises. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll do what I can to supply those. And mojitos. And, and every and everybody <laughs> take the red Except pill. <laughs>